So I'm guiding her tibia into inward rotation as I push the meniscus under the femur. That's not very comfortable, I imagine. But what I'm actually gonna use is this drop piece. Her tibia, nice, which puts a nice Nice. Motion of that hip going that way. Ready. You got it. No worries, no worries at all. Uh, several years ago, I had an accident where I basically tore the meniscus in my left knee. Uh, it was painful as all get out. And I've been coming to the Source Chiropractic since about a month after it happened. I have not had to have surgery. I've had one cortisone inje injection from my healthcare when it got really bad, but uh, basically uh, Dr. Brett and Dr. Jordan have helped me heal this knee to the point where I can work well again without pain and without impediment. So you got to hear a little bit of Denise's story about how she had a meniscus tear and instead of having surgeries, she sought chiropractic care in order to relieve that knee pain. You can see in her pre and post squat videos how she really only had like five to 10 degrees of flexion as she was coming down into the squat because her knee was so painful. And now she has pretty much full range of motion in her hips and in her knee. There is some instability there, but she's able to have that full range of function and it doesn't have the same level of knee pain, which is totally Awesome. We're going to do an assessment here with Denise. One of the things that we noticed after working with her for some time is that she al also had a really high ilium. So one side of the hip bones was rocked up, which when we watch her walk, you can see how there's that rotation and unleveling as well. This is something that we noticed that happened when she was very young after falling off of a horse and then her body has compensated over time because of that. So not only did she have an injury to the meniscus on that left side, she's also been compensating and putting more weight onto the left leg because of the right ilium. So yes, we are taking care of the knee, but we also wanna make sure that we can improve the function and how level and balanced her hips are that so, she, so that she's not putting more weight onto that left leg. So the initial thing that we see as we are starting to work on her is first wanting to see what is her leg length difference. A lot of times people are putting more weight onto one side and have one leg that is shorter because the hip is higher on one side or there's some sort of rotation. With Denise now, because she's been coming in for some time, her legs are nice and level, but that was not necessarily the case when she first started. One thing I do notice when she's laying on the table though is that this right side is rocked more up off the table. So we're probably thinking posterior rotation of the sacrum, which will bring the ilium along with it. So there's many ways to adjust the lumbo pelvic region. We can adjust side posture, we can adjust face down, we could adjust face up. With her, I like using these blocks under her hips. So one side down uh, lower on the left, and then we're gonna go up above the ASIS on the right side. So we're taking out some of that rotation in her hips and I'll have you take a big breath in. As she breathes in, I like to traction that leg down. And then just in this position, now she's much more level. So we have that offset nature with the blocks, which is leveling her out. And we're gonna allow some time for her to integrate. So she's gonna be breathing down to her tailbone and her muscles and ligaments are starting to adapt to this position over time. We will then notice uh, that we can actually adjust her hips in this position to reinforce more balance within her pelvis. So if that side's up high, we're gonna bring it back down this direction in order to create more function and proper motion of that hip going that way. Is that okay? Yeah. Great. And so putting some motion in that downward rotation, so bringing it from an anterior superior position to a posterior inferior orientation, which levels out her pelvis nice. And then checking lumbars. Her lumbars are doing really well. We do notice some more compression of her TL junction here. So this junction, as it goes this way, we have her nice in the blocks here, which creates space in the lumbars and this area. But I'll have you take a big breath in. We're gonna adjust TL and out. Nice, big breath in. Creating some space. So this will just cause compression over time. Breathing out. 
Very good. Now we're just increasing the mobility, flexibility of her spine, taking some of that compressive loading out of her lumbars. This is really good. There are times where we will adjust the fibula or tibia in the lower leg in this face down position. We have done that with her in the past, but as of right now, I'm not really feeling anything that's being called to that. Cool, so we're gonna check out her knee with her face up. Can I get you laying face up now? So I think it's really important to note that yes, she had an actual tear to her meniscus, but she's also had a chronic pattern because of a past injury, which then reinforced more loading onto that injured leg. So we're wanting to take care of the acute injury, but also make sure that we're changing her function and improving how her pelvis is moving over time so that it doesn't continue to be a problem for years after this. So one of the things we wanna check out is how is her tibia rotating? It rotates in that way really nicely. This is on the border of her tibia and femur where the meniscus is. Is that super tender? Yeah, and I do feel a, a, a inflammation of the tissues of the meniscus in that region. So what we're gonna actually do is move the meniscus back under the femur as she goes through the range of motion. So I'm bringing her knee into more internal rotation. Is that okay? I'm gonna hold that and have you bend your leg. So I'm guiding her tibia into inward rotation as I push the meniscus under the femur. That's not very comfortable, I imagine, <laughs> and coming back down. Not as bad as it has been. Yeah, you've done that before and it's been wow. Yeah, so doing a lot better than it used to. I didn't even speak. Holding the meniscus, we're gonna do that one more time. Guiding the tibia into inward rotation, pushing the meniscus under the femur. Awesome, and back down. Okay, and again, checking the rotation, perfect rotation. Glide of the tibia forward and back, that moves really well. The other main thing is wanting to see her kneecap as her quads here above her kneecap have gotten really tight over time. So I could break that up manually with, a, um, with breaking up the muscles with my thumbs, but what I'm actually gonna use is this drop piece, which is similar to the table that lifts up and down, but we're gonna guide her patella, the kneecap back down, which will reinforce the muscle spindle cells in her quad to not fire and contract all of this. Is that okay? Going down that way. So bringing her patella back down towards her tibia. Nice, which puts a nice stretch on the quads and relaxes everything. Oh. Yeah, so now these fibers, not as tender, right? Right. Yeah, cool. I wanted to check out the ankles and feet because you're not just a knee and you're not just a hip. There's also these feet that touch the ground first, and sometimes if there's something going off the foot, the knee will compensate. So this is right on the first metatarsal head. Nice. So right in the arch of the foot, awesome. That's moving good. Perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and check the rest of Denise, but I hope you found that very useful information. If you've had a meniscus tear, you don't have to have surgery. That is a very common myth. There are options such as chiropractic in which we can regain proper function of the knee, of the surrounding musculature, and of your pelvis <laughs> in order to help you get out of knee pain and help you live a more functional, healthy life. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. I hope you found this useful and I love and appreciate you. Take care.